Hey, what's up guys? My name is Avi and welcome back to The Codex. In today's video, we're starting a brand new series, Python and Machine Learning. This was by far the most requested video or series for me to start. And I'm really excited for what I've laid out and all the future project-based sort of videos that will be coming out, which will go over a lot of different algorithms and topics in machine learning. So without further ado, let's dive right in. What is machine learning? Machine learning, the high level definition is the science and art of programming computers so they can learn from data. Essentially, any form of data that you have, whether it's numbers, whether it's classification data, whether it's playing Mario and taking in those inputs, any form of data computers can learn from and act on. Now, a common example could be, can you tell me what the weather is tomorrow? Well, you can take historical data of whether it's gonna rain tomorrow or not, and tell me based on prior data, yeah, obviously it's gonna rain tomorrow, or maybe you won't. That is just one example of hundreds of thousands out there of machine learning being used every day. So let me ask you something. How would you design a spam filter? Spam filters have been around for a couple of decades now, and spam filters are by means one of the most important sort of machine learning tools invented for us. So if a human were to do this, the human approach would be to look at the spam emails, write a lot of if else, if else, if else statements or if else if statements, and then test until all the spam emails have been found. You would be like, okay, if my email contains the word um, deal, or if it contains the word promo, or if it's by this email address and this email address, that is spam. And again, the problem with this is it's a long list of complex rules. Um, it's very hard to maintain. And essentially you're just creating several if, if, else, else statements that go on and on and on. What if the spammers decided to change up their ways? Then you would have to go back to your rules, manipulate them, add some, subtract some, and that doesn't seem like the best way to do it. That's where machine learning comes in. The machine approach is to look at these spam emails and recognize a frequent pattern of words. So let's say I have a thousand emails. Uh, a common split in machine learning is to take 80% of your data set, consider that to be your training data set, and then 20% of your data set to be your testing data set. So I have 800 emails, which is 80% of my 1000 emails. And I'm gonna go ahead and take these 800 emails and try to recognize frequent patterns of words. Oh, 50 of these had the word deal, 100 of them had promo, um, 15 were by this specific sender. And the machine will go ahead and figure out these patterns that all these spam emails share. And then what the machine can do is to see how good their current approach is, is essentially checking the accuracy of the algorithm by testing this algorithm on the 20% of emails that are left. So the 200 unseen spam emails, you go ahead and pass those in and you get an accuracy factor. Okay, my spam filter is 87% accurate. That means that if I run this algorithm on let's say 100 new spam emails, 87 of them will be marked spent, which I think is pretty good. So that is the machine approach. And you can evidently see this is very easy to maintain. It's more accurate and it can automatically adapt the changes. You could create a machine learning algorithm can, that can understand on the flow. Okay. This is spam. This is not spam. Or you could go ahead and retrain your machine learning algorithm by adding in the new spam emails into your training set. So as you can see, the benefits of machine learning are immense and Looking at our day-to-day -day life, you'll see machine learning everywhere. In 1959, Arthur Samuel first coined the real machine learning algorithm. He created one for checkers. And he stated that machine learning is the field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. And at the end of the day, that's exactly what machine learning is. You can see machine learning everywhere. When you're on Facebook and you see those specific posts about the NFL or about a meme, those have been meticulously chosen because Facebook knows exactly what you want to see and what you're going to engage with. When you take a picture of someone and Facebook automatically tags that person or it automatically shows up in you know, your Apple photos, or when you say, Hey Siri, and your phone immediately lights up and it can respond to any question you ask, like, Hey Siri, flip a coin. That is all speech comprehension, another form of machine learning. Machine learning exists in also a lot of unique cases that current companies are working on. I'm gonna go ahead and name a few just to get you excited about this. Maybe you've already heard about them, but just bear with me. 
So first of all, Google Duplex. Google Duplex is this product launched in 2018 and Google basically imitates your voice when making a booking or reservation. It acts as your assistant, except it sounds just like a real human voice. And this is what I think is amazing. They have the ums, the ahs, the normal sounds a human makes, but this is all created through machine learning. So you could go ahead and tell Google, book me an appointment at this barbershop at 7 p.m. Google will call that barbershop and pretend to be an actual human ordering that appointment at 7 p.m. Very, very cool stuff. Excited to see where the technology goes. Another so kind of negative outlook of machine learning is deep fakes. Now, deep fakes have been used in political settings, in um, world leader settings, where people create fake videos that look and feel just like the actual person we're speaking. Imagine seeing a presidential candidate going up on stage and saying something that's very polarizing, something that they not say, and that video gets shared on social media, a lot of people are talking about it, and then it comes out that that was a deep fake. That's exactly what's happening in today's day and age, and these were created through very unique and very cool machine learning algorithms. If you want to learn more, definitely check out YouTube for deep fakes, a very cool topic that is currently trying to be solved and researchers and scientists around the world are trying to figure out what video is a deep fake and what video is real. Last but not least, AlphaGo. AlphaGo is Google's AI for the game of Go. The game of Go is um, a Chinese game originated um, a while back actually, and it's said to say it is the world's most complicated game. That being said, um, there are more atoms, sorry, there are more combinations of Go games than there are atoms in this world. And essentially what that means is it's like two to the 80 something um, uh, ways to play the game, so many different com combinations, infinitely more complicated than chess, and Go or Google created an AI to play the game Go. And eventually they created a live stream broadcast of AlphaGo versus Lisa Do. Um, the world's greatest Go player and AlphaGo beat Lisa Dahl four to one. And this entire documentary is on Netflix. I would highly, highly recommend if you have nothing else to do, watch this documentary on Netflix. I personally loved it. But again, a very cool example of Google using machine learning to create an AI to play a game, which is extremely complicated. So with that said, one last example, autonomous vehicles. When you have an autonomous vehicle, there's so many sensors and so much continuous input. What's in front of me? What's behind me? What's the driver doing? Are they awake, etc.? There's object detection, identification, path planning, decision making. So many factors are going on at the same time and it's up to one or multitude of machine learning algorithms to make the decision that has the driver's hand, the driver's life, the passenger's lives all in the hand of a machine learning algorithm. I personally believe by 2030, we won't even have to drive vehicles. We'll have these autonomous vehicles on the road and they'll be driving us around. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a step back. You have a high level understanding of machine learning. And as you grow as a machine learning developer, I really want to, to consider the ethics of your machine learning algorithm. Because at the end of the day, your machine learning algorithm has human lives at stake. How do you decide who decides in a self-driving accident? You know, MIT has an amazing study on this. And if you have some time, check this out rollmachine.mit.edu. And this website essentially asks you 13 questions on different situations. You have a self-driving car, there could be passengers in it, there could be not. And in every scenario, there are two different groups of people whose lives are at risk. In the first case, for example, you have um, a doctor, a homeless man, a baby, and a child, or a doctor and a child. Like, which one do you choose? And in this case, the machine learning algorithm is learning from human intuition. Maybe in this case, you choose the right side because there's less lives, right? You have just the doctor and the baby. I'm not sure the decision is completely up to you. In another interesting case, you have a self-driving car, homeless man on the right, and you have a businessman, oh, sorry, a homeless man on the left, businessman on the right. Which one do you choose? Why do you make the decision? You see, machine learning algorithms ultimately have our lives at stake. Self-driving boats, self-driving planes, self-driving cars, all of these are just algorithms to decide the fate of someone's life. And understanding how humans perceive machines making intelligent choices is very, very important. So as a machine learning developer, as you grow, as you start writing nice, amazing algorithms, work for big companies, that's one thing to always keep in the back of your mind. 
What are the ethics of your algorithm? How can you create machine learning algorithms for the greater good? And again, ensure that little or no harm comes to the actual human being population. So with that said, I hope you're really excited for the series. Machine learning is amazing and I'm gonna do my best to show you all the nooks and crannies and the amazing algorithms you can create with Python. And last but not least, to give a quick overview of how this series is gonna look, the first couple of videos is gonna be the high level terms. What is supervised learning? What is unsupervised learning? Go over all the basics. And then after that, there'll be a series of projects where we cover concepts from linear regression to neural networks and a whole lot of things. So I hope you're excited. I know I am, and I can't wait to see you in a future video. See you then.